So guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my winter updated personal survival kit. And before we get into this, as always guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe to see more of awesome Alaskan content. Now, let's get into this. Okay guys, so on a nice chilly day, I decided it would be a pretty good idea to break open or take a look at my personal survival kit for winter time in Alaska and once again <clears throat> just for those who are unaware of what my personal survival kit is it's basically for any outdoor operations hiking hunting bushcrafting um, just anything like that where I'm going to be outside in the cold or out in the wilderness going to be away from vehicles uh, if you guys don't know and you're wondering well where's your survival kit for like vehicles I actually have another kit just go look up my mini comprehensive survival kit. I might ro roll in a card around here uh, going into that. That's what I carry for my other more urban and it's even more comprehensive than this kit. So this kit is more for going out into the woods uh, and just having a kit for preparedness. So I have two different kits and if you guys want to see that one take a look at that video and then if you want to see this one uh, press on pack is the Maxpedition Janus and uh, that's it's just a pocket extension is what they call it but it's the Janus pocket extension and it's basically like a little miniature pack that you're supposed to wear on your belt so starting off with it uh, the underneath this I carry a uh, Streamlight Stylus Pro under here and so that's what this is you guys can kind of see as a bit of a beam if you did actually need to use it to see something it does actually throw underneath the pack pretty well but you could also easily just pull this out and take it from there so the next part is under here I have a just a very basic Brunton true arc 3 compass just that sits right underneath here and I'm not gonna pull it out just for time's sake but that is what is there so that is all that is on the outside of this pack now let's dig into the contents of what's on the inside now I know I've gotten some comments in the past about the this and kind of like uh, how I could improve it and so I'm trying to improve it to the best of my abilities and so it's always kind of mixed up on the inside of here but this is what I have so far and then this has a little bit higher emphasis as kind of uh, with my mini, mini uh, comprehensive kit I put a heavier emphasis on this uh, with medical stuff so though it's not a five C's of survivability per se this does have a heavier emphasis on uh, medical stuff so the first thing is of course this is quick clot combat gauze just in case once again uh, something that I never really factored but should have factored into my uh, survival kit is the fact that whenever hunting hiking uh, bushcrafting you're dealing with lots of tools that could really hurt you or could really hurt the person you're with so I'm packing some medical or some combat gauze and this stuff is designed for mass bleeding if you really cut yourself or if you get shot and it's just bleeding profusely obviously this is not to stop stop articulary or vein, vein any cuts to veins or arteries <clears throat> so this is not to stop those but this could be used if you get cut like I accidentally here recently cut myself with a Benchmade Infidel and it was bleeding very badly I ended up having to get stitches but uh, it was bleeding extremely bad and so in that case I could have used some quick clot military or combat gauze to actually stop the bleeding and uh, I wouldn't have lost as much blood so that's a very righteous use and once again why I carry this or it was a nice reminder of that so the next part is a part of the five C's and that is just around five or six feet of nicely tightened and nicely this is a butterfly hitch and uh, this is just paracord 550 non gutted uh, 550 cord <laughs> just very basic so next to that I have uh, just standard run-of-the-mill uh, iodine tablets and next to that I have waterproof matches in a waterproof container they are waterproof themselves and then I have them in a waterproof container and then on top of them I have steel wool and I carry steel wool in there one because it's a good ignition source it's something that you can use as tinder and I'll show you also why I carry it here in a little bit or why I also carry steel wool in a little bit so here I carry some smaller 
plastic bags. These are just, just small miscellaneous plastic bags. And then here I'm carrying with a rubber band. I should note, both of these have rubber bands. And then this is a full size sandwich bag. So it's not gigantic, but this one alone is larger than these. Some, all of these combined are probably more space wise, but I carry these for to go in tandem with the iodine tablets to carry water if I need to have some way of having watertight means of carrying water. I have plastic bags for that. So also in the center I have a mylar blanket because it's cold out here nowadays so I carry a mylar space blanket there and then next to that I carry just a standard uh, green bandana. <sighs> So digging into, I'm actually gonna dig into this side first. This is the side that's facing you guys, or that you guys can see rather. And this side has first a Benchmade Mini Grip in it. Once again, no huge surprise here because I love the Mini Grip as a survival knife and just a general purpose uh, all around kind of knife that's good for survival kits. Also has a deep carry clip on it just so that if I actually wanna clip it to myself, I have that option. It doesn't have to stay in the pack. Next to that, I have an orange Light My Fire Army Ferro Rod, and it has a lanyard, and I should note that I set this lanyard up in the pack so that the lanyard's actually sticking out, so that if I had to grab it quickly, or if I just had really numb fingers and I couldn't do this very well, I could just reach in there, rip it out, and I wouldn't have to go digging through there with a finger or two to try and get it out. I could just grab the lanyard and rip it out. Next is some wet fire by UST. Then following that, I have some snare wire. And I have a striker, a dedicated striker for the Light My Fire. However, the uh, back, the spine of this knife can also work well as the striker for the ferro rod. It kind of just depends if I don't have this knife or for whatever reason I'm separated from the knife. I just wanted to have a dedicated ferro rod striker in there just so that I knew for whatever reason I could strike it. Next to that I have two zip ties. They're just medium sized zip ties. Then I also have some more kind of miscellaneous stuff, but I have a sail needle or a netting needle, or not a needle, sorry, sail or canvas needle, and then just three uh, safety pins. And so that's all that is in that side. So now moving to this side. <laughs> So the next thing I also have on a lanyard is my Fox 40 Mini, and I've carried this thing forever, and it's just a really great, these things are really awesome. They're very inexpensive to get, and I personally like the Fox 40 Minis. They're really loud, and like I said, I carried on a lanyard for similar reason to my uh, ferro rod, just for whatever reason, if my hands aren't working the way they should, I can just rip it out of the pack and give it a really loud blow to let anyone know in this general area that I'm here and I need their assistance. So next thing is I do carry just a little bit of standard gauze for whatever reason. Uh, gauze can be burnt as well as it can be used for packaging wounds. It can be used for many different things and uh, overall it's just a really good thing to have on standby. So next to that, I've upped the amount of band-aids I carry and I've upped the size or the different types. So I'm carrying a couple smaller band-aids and then I'm carrying three larger band-aids just to suit any uh, wound needs I get that could be facilitated with a band-aid. Next to that, I'm carrying once again the Spider Code Double Stuff for a sharpening option. Of course, having a blade in the uh, kit, you wanna make sure that that blade, especially if that's your only blade, that you wanna make sure that it is sharp. So then next to that, I have a Cliff Bar. Cliff Bars are really great. They're very tasty and uh, they have a good amount of calories to them. Then I have two Starbucks Vias. If I had to, I could dump these in these plastic bags, make a quick, really impromptu cup of coffee, and that caffeine kind of boost could help keep me going, keep me alert, keep me attentive if I need to like walk out or do something like that. Now, earlier I mentioned in the video that I have the steel wool for two reasons. One, it is a fire starter. If you hit it with ferro rod, it will go up too. But also you can use it in conjunction with batteries, which I carry two extra batteries for the flashlight, of course. But if you take one of these batteries or both of these batteries, it doesn't matter, and you connect the positive and negative terminals of this alkaline battery, it will light off the, um, 
<coughs> steel wool as well. So that's an alternative way of fire starting that I wanted to incorporate. And it was also very easy to incorporate. So guys, that is my entire kit for winter. This is my personal survival kit. Once again, this type of survival kit is what I use for if I'm going to be out in the woods or adventuring. This is the kit that I carry on my belt and it just helps me uh, should I ever get separated from my backpack because oftentimes when I am out hunting, hiking, or bushcrafting, I carry a pack that also has knives, guns, different things like that in them. But should I ever get separated from my backpack or I can't find it or I have to overnight or whatever happens, it's nice to have a pretty comprehensive kit to have survival stuff, especially now that it's getting colder out. You definitely want to make sure that you're not playing around, you're not um, <laughs> overall thinking or underthinking your strategies. So anyways, this is my kit. And once again, I expanded really more on medical stuff here because uh, I realized that it's probably a pretty good idea, even though they're not a part of the five or 10 C's of survivability, uh, I could pretty easily put gauze and combat gauze in here without really weighing this pack down much more. And the increased capabilities that those allow me to have definitely outweigh the cost. So anyways, guys, that's all for now. God bless and I'm out.